Right guys, hello those of you that have the K55 RGB gaming keyboard from Corsair, you're probably aware that they say it's not officially compatible with the lighting link feature in the IQ software that basically allows all RGB devices from Corsair to sync together to do the same lighting effects. There is a workaround, that's why I'm doing the video. Those of you that just want to get straight to that, I'll put uh, a timestamp pinned in the comments below. So before we do that, I just want to talk through the keyboard quickly, not to do a review, just to help people out in case they don't own it and think this is kind of cool to help you save a little bit of money. So the keyboard itself, you can watch reviews on it. It's actually pretty good. Uh, it's a membrane keys rather than being mechanical. So it is quieter when you're typing and gaming, which I do appreciate. There's dedicated media buttons for the volume, pause, fast forward, stop. Uh, you've got macro keys, six of them to the very left, program to do what you want. You can disable the Windows key, you've got a key to change the brightness, and it's got anti-ghosting. I think you can have eight or nine keys pressed simultaneously, and they all register. So I'm very happy with a keyboard. However, I would not pay £55 for it. We can see that they do a kit. You can get the Harpoon RGB mouse with it as well for £75. Now, what I did, I'm not sponsored by Scan in any way, uh, just showing you where I got it from, but I got it refurbished. When it was refurbished, it's cost me £30. And the only difference really is it turned up in a brown box. Once it's unboxed, you wouldn't know the difference. It looks absolutely brand spanking new. So I've got a reasonable discount on the keyboard. And as far as the mice go, so the Harpoon RGB mouse, when I got mine, it was also refurbished. It was nearer to £10. I've had it for a year now and it's still working absolutely fine. Uh, but we can see here it's just on offer, so they're going to sell it for about £20. So we can get the refurbished keyboard and this mouse for about the same price as what it should be just to get the keyboard uh, retail. If it's actually a little bit cheaper. But of course, they'll do some other Corsair RGB mice. So we can see there is a refurbished Corsair Glaive mouse, which has a higher DPI. That's £25. So yes, that would actually come in basically at the same price of buying the keyboard alone. Uh, so it's just to make people aware of refurbished products and what you can get for your money. Uh, you can scroll down and you'll see that glaive should be £40 or more. So if we can find it, we've got the wireless harpoon there, the iron claw. So gaming glaive, RGB, it's a wired mouse, should be £41.99. So that's a reasonable saving going uh, with the refurbished items but we shall get on let's do the fix so if you haven't bought the keyboard yet uh, it's probably a very good idea that you actually do get the latest software download it from Corsair get the IQ software and update the firmware for your keyboard and for your mouse or any other devices that you own those of you that already have the keyboard you've probably already done this and then what you're going to want to do is uninstall the software. The reason is we actually want to have version 3.1.133. Uh, for whatever reason, when they released this version, the K55 worked in the lighting link. Now it doesn't have per key lighting, so not all of the effects will work. And maybe that's why they say it's not officially compatible. But if we have this version installed, we can get the K55 into the lighting link. So uninstall the software, it will say do you want to delete your user settings? Just tick the box to say yes, uninstall it. I'll put a link in the description so you can get this spe uh, specific version of the software. And what we can do then is go into the lighting effects and we can see I've added the K55 into the lighting link. So we can just change it. You should see the preview in the top right hand corner. You see the keyboard's trying to give me an epileptic fit. We see that the mouse is also in the lighting link. And when I change that, it's doing its job. It's also syncing up with the keyboard. So let's put it on something less offensive. What we want to do now that we've set up the lighting link is do an update. So we'll let this download. I won't put you through the install process, but when I come back, I just want to show why RGB is actually quite useful to me. I have a practical use for it in that I have it set up to correspond to the temperature of my CPU, which is very useful. If I see the keys all turn red, that's telling me that the computer is getting very hot. Maybe there's something wrong 
and I need to shut it down and, and have a look at it. So that's uh, actually quite quite a useful uh, feature. Some people think it's just for show. Of course, you can do that if you just want it to be flashy, but it can actually be a practical use as well. So that's nearly downloaded. I'll be back in a couple of minutes, although to you, it's only just going to be a second. That's now done. IQ is updated from within the software itself. You can see we're now version 3.25. 0.60. It might be higher by the time you watch this video. It shouldn't really matter. So what we're going to do is go back over to the mouse. Now it's very important you don't try to change the lighting effects through the keyboard. Otherwise, the software will crash. It's just a slight caveat to doing this workaround. So any changes I'm going to do through the mouse. So we'll click just to show it's still working, still synced up, but we now have some extra presets available that weren't available before. Now I can do the temperature. So you can see I've got an i7-2600K, quite an old CPU, but it's still doing its job. But in order for it to still be relevant today, I do need to overclock it. So that takes a little bit more voltage. More voltage means more heat. I need to keep an eye on the temperatures. Uh, so we've got these colors to show me the state uh, the CPU's in. So I'll do the base. The lowest temperature is white. As it gets warmer, we'll go blue until it's too hot and it's red. So I know I really want to keep this around 70 degrees or lower. Even 80 degrees is safe, but if it is hitting that temperature, I want to know why and uh, do some maintenance. Maybe the fan's going wrong, you know, whatever. Uh, once all the keys go red, that's a very obvious um, cry for help from the computer. Now, obviously, it's a gradient, so you know it's white. It's going to start going a pale, pale blue to like a sky blue, then a deep blue, and as it moves into the higher temperatures, we're going to start getting a purple effect, which I quite like when I'm gaming. But you can change the temperatures to whatever you see fit, and that will adjust the uh, the gradient depending what temperature your CPU reaches under gaming. You don't have to do the CPU. You can do it off your graphics card. You can have other sensors off the motherboard as well. I just like to do it off the CPU. I find that incredibly useful. We'll just go into the DPI section of the mouse quickly. Just so you can see there are sensitivity presets. We can set one as default that it will always use. Now, if I click the button behind the mouse wheel, it will go through those different sensitivity settings. And you see the, the RGB light on the mouse will just briefly change to the color to let me know which preset has been selected. And then it will just return to the lighting link color. So that's kind of useful. That's all there is to it, guys. As I say, though, do not, whatever you do, try to change the lighting effects through the keyboard in IQ because it will crash the software. Uh, so if all you own is the keyboard, it's a little bit tricky to actually use the temperature effects. So that's why I showed you can get um, these gaming mice with the RGB. You know, look for one maybe that's uh, refurbished or, or on offer. But that's it. Have a great day. Have a great evening, whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.